This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You shall talk an absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You were an underachiever in life. You were, I'd see if you were bacon one time. You were gone. Well, I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, but you said the right thing. But that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that what, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. And a very warm welcome to part two of the Bar Stewards Weekend. Sacre bleu again, because this is the part of the show. It's Le Bog, Le Vaunt, or his Vaunt, wind in French, maybe. Blogger is over there as well, like like plowing his trade, eating steaks off the French uh, Gallup's budget. Um, uh, what do you feel about that, listeners? The, the blogger over there, he, he loves the game. Um, anyway, we're going to cover um, the two uh, race days at Longchamp and um, we're going to start off with our best bets uh, on Saturday between our, our four panellists um, it's, a, it's still a good card on Saturday obviously you know Longchamp is is renowned for its group ones on Sunday not alone the arc there's some tremendous racing at Longchamp tomorrow but there's also some good racing at Longchamp also and obviously uh, uh, Stradivarius in the, in the stayers race with Trushan and Princess Zoe clashing in the Cadran but uh, we're going to start off um, with you, John. Have you anything that took your eye um, at Longchamp on Saturday at the Le Bog? Well, close is difficult at the first gas the twin wheels a wicked. Some tricky races at the Frog Gas Pit over the weekend. <laughs> Patrick Sass railed, I think, in the round the quarter. It's been off since Ascot, and that was a nice warm up for this in the uh, Irish champion. So, in total, the one for it, which he will. Uh, the baby Joseph's very much like his old man. He doesn't mind using a grope one to put an edge on a horse. Um, I think this is the value in the race and fairly solid each way material. Magellan comes out top on me figures. His dandy runs looking fairly warm, but. He bombed out on his one trip to France. So I'm, uh, I'm happy to swear him and go with Patrick Sarsfield. So Patrick Sarsfield for the for the baby Joseph at nine to one in the pre-dollar, the four o'clock dollar. John, did you like dollar the the group dollar? Mirror Mirror was in the <laughs> top 165 cheesy pop anthems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dollar. Yeah, a blast from the past. Dollar, the pre-dollar. David yes, group. and Teresa Bazaar. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I like. I like your knowledge. Pr- Patrick Sarsfield for John at nine to one for the baby Joseph um, to to fly the flag for Ireland uh, there in the pre-dollar. Quentin, coming to you for your uh, best bet on the Saturday. Um, I only looked at the Cadran. I. Quite happy to back Trushan, to be honest. I think there'll be enough digging the ground. Um, I still think he's overpriced at what is he nine to four? It's probably more thirteen to eight, six to four. Poke. Um, you can either back him for the Cadran there, or you can back him anti post for the um, long distance at Ascot, where it looks like he's going to get heavy ground. Stradivarius, what will likely not run, and I think he's two to one, nine to four for that. So you can play it either way, to be honest. Yeah, very, very shrewd. I mean, I mean, Princess Zoe obviously, you know, loves the, obviously previous winner, loves the mud. But yeah, like Trushan, interesting play there from from uh, from Quentin. He believes that also you could play the horse uh, to in in the uh, the Stayers race at Ascot on Champions Day, and uh, that could be value with certainly probably Strad a non runner due to the ground. Are, are we surprised, Quentin, that Strad's going to be running? Uh. Somewhat surprised, yes, but I got thinking it'll be his last run. So it, as long as it's kind of good to soft, then they'll run him. I don't think they'll run him in the long distance cup. Um, he, he, he's already shown his hand in terms of didn't run him at Goodwood when it was soft, heavy, whatever it was. Um, so I think this will be one last hurrah. That's why they run him. Yeah, no, fair, fair comment. So Quentin, all over true shant in the pre run. Um, Andy, anything for Saturday took your eye and uh, start of the, interest? The old Daniel Wildenstein, the Qatar pre-Daniel Wildenstein at 133 um, was the one that took my eye. I mean, if the Revenant turns up in the right form, he probably wins this. But I think there's a little bit of better value with Real World. Um, yeah. 
I mean, that's probably the one that might be your each way bet to nothing. Uh, famous last words there. Um, I just think he might just be a little bit of value in the race, real world. He's got some reasonable form. Um, he's been a bit of a revelation since he came back from Dubai, hasn't he? I mean, you know, he pulverised the opposite. There's no other word for it in the Royal Hunt Cup, didn't he? Where he was yeah. arguably drawn on the wrong side as well. Um, and he's taken the step up well into listed in Group 3 company. And he looks as though he's got the potential to apply in maybe in Group 1s. This is only a Group 2. Um, and it's interesting that Connections have opted for this race uh, as opposed to the pre-dollar because this looks a stronger contest to me. Um, he's, the one thing is he might just get hopefully gets in before it goes to uh, to mush over there. But I think he's probably what is a pretty again a pretty strong old card, isn't it? Um, real world round sort of four to one for Mister De Tory. Good stuff. Real world for Andy. The best bet on Saturday there in the. Uh, Mr. Daniel Wildenstein, um, pre-Daniel Wilson in a Group 2 affair. Uh, my best bet for the Saturday cards is a little bit obvious, um, but I do like the price. And to me, price is everything. Um, and basically, it is short. But if you couple Valaya and Joie de Soir in the 250, that's the pre de Royaleur, um, you get around four to five, eight to eleven, and I, I'm pretty certain if you wait for the exchanges, you'll probably get around four to five at least. Um, I think that's absolutely Colonel cur- Mustard. It's absolutely solid. Um, there's a lot of fillies in this that aren't in the best shape, and secondly, wouldn't be in the class of these two. Um, these fillies have uh, have met each other last time out. I've watched the race. Um, I mean, R- R- Rabia, for example, is in the arc, um, you know, and these two fillies followed it home over an, ad- an inadequate trip, in my view. I think both of them, are gonna, obviously, Valaya uh, is very, he's renowned for running over further. Um, but, uh, last year, beating the Nimean Lion by two lengths, was two lengths second to subjectivist uh, last year at Longchamp uh, in the pre-Royal Oak. Um, it, it's solid, solid form, real good form for fillies. And I cannot, I cannot have either of these not winning the race. It literally is like that. I would make this threes on that one of these fillies wins the race. That's Valia and Joie de Soir. You're getting four to five, eight to 11. It's absolutely cock solid as a Saturday banker. Um, so if you like the Ginger Hitler, who loves a shorty, and, mm-hmm. he's, and Ginger Hitler might be tuning in, let's hope he is, because this is the kind of bet the Ginger Hitler likes, something that he can get stuck into and pay the eckies. And that's for me in the uh, Prix de Royale, Valaya and Joie de Soir, the class acts of the race with a lot of out of form fillies and substandard fillies against in opposition. Right, we move forward on to Sunday where we've got an absolutely barrage of group ones, um, which we'll cover now. And we start with the uh, Qatar pre Marcel Boussac. Uh, Raclette, uh, trained by Andre Farb, is the favourite at half arm, six to four, uh, under Maxime Guillon. Um, and I'm going to come to you, Quentin. Any view on the pre Marcel Boussac? Yes, I've got. Uh, I don't think the favourite will run. Uh, Farb came out mm. pretty much said that um, earlier today. He said there's a lot of rain. She'll she won't run. She'll head the new market. So I've kind of looked at the race without Raclette in it. Um, if she does run, she's the best of these. She looks she looks a good one to be honest. Yeah, um, nice fella. Yeah, she's she's quick enough off steady fractions last time out, beating a colt in um, Wallero, I think it was called, that a yeah. strong maiden form. Um, but I've looked I've looked at the race without her in it, and then if if, if she runs, she runs. Um, I was surprised to see Zelly as big as she is. Um, Ocean Murphy takes the ride ahead of Hugo Ben Besnier. Um, she was behind Fleur de Iré. Who's eleven to two nine to four nine to eleven to two five to one for this race? Um, she and Zelly's available at twelves, tens in a place. Um, Fleur de Fingy, Barcelona's ride got the got the run of the race, um, whereas Zelly had to take back from a wide draw, otherwise would have been posted three deep. Um, found a bit bit of trouble in running as well, and was just staying on, closing all the way to the line. Um, I'd be surprised if she doesn't reverse that form. To be honest. Um, She's doubled the price. Um, she looks the value in the race. Um, Natasha of Gosden's well-positioned in a slowly run race at 
uh, Sandown last time out. That form looks ropey. The the Kempton all weather win is so so. Um, she's got to step up. Uh, the other one that was interesting I felt was Asa Ali, uh, despite being by Sayuni, uh, it's proven on heavy ground already. Um, she was the other interesting one. Um, that that form worked out from last time with El Bogdan of. James Ferguson's winning the other day. I think it was yesterday, actually. Um, but Zelly, for me, there's 12 to 1 in her place, generally 9, 10 to 1. Uh, she's the overpriced one. Good stuff. Zelly, 12 to 1 for Andre Farb and Oshin. Um Had a bang on the head at Salisbury um, <laughs> the other day. I mean, that was pretty horrific, the, the booking Bronco there. And Lexa Oshin um, is in good form uh, on Zelly there for Quentin. Uh, Andy, I'm coming to you on the Marcel Buxac. Uh Yeah, obviously, Quinton's flagged up the fact that uh, Raclette may not run. Mr. Farb, he's got a couple of others in the race with Zelly and Fleur de Gris, uh, who are both, I um, mean, he's got a pretty good record in this race as well. Uh, the best on ratings would be Agatha, but I'm not sure that, you know, maybe her uh, improvement has run out. And Quinton has, meant, uh, has mentioned the one that I was going to have a stab at at a price, hopefully, would be Asa Ali. There's one on the heavy, yet to try a mile, but should stay. Won a group three at Longchamp over seven furlong last time out. Correctly, the third has won. Uh, Le Bogodon uh, has won, and it was uh, well, it was a group three next time out. So there's a little bit of substance in the form there. I thought she'd be a little bit shorter, to be honest with you. Um, I thought at a price, it's hard to tell what the price is going to be because the, the favourite might not run him. But if she's a double figure price, I thought in a race which has probably lost a bit of its luster, if Raclette is uh, is out, then Asa Ali was probably one that uh, to play to small stakes uh, each way a pleasure. Good stuff. Asa Ali for Andy at 14s. Zelly for Quentin at 12s. John? I wasn't asked about the race once he said it. I wasn't going to run. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, like, like Raclette is a, he's, a, he's a, I must admit, watching videos of Raclette, I'm thinking, Jesus, this is, this is, this is some tool. Um, but like, obviously, like Quentin says, uh, the, the interest has gone out of it for me. Uh, at that it becomes a substandard race. So from there on, um, I'm, me and John, I think, are passing on a selection of the Marcel Boussac. Uh, so the, the boys there, Quentin and Andy, say Zelly. And Asa Ali, uh, me and John pass. It's certainly a gin and pate race. We move to the 150, which is the Grand Criterion. And the last winner I backed in this was Snurge in 1991. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that, this, this is the race. Is that the race? The Grand Criterion. Snurge. I think it won. Yeah, Paul Cole, 91. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> C- correct me if I'm wrong. If I've gone wrong on this again, which I'm prone to do it <laughs> after several litres of gin and vodka. But I'm sure Snurge won this race. If it didn't, then I'm going to look stupid. But anyway, I thought Snurge won this race. John, did Snurge win this race? I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, Go on. I think, I think uh, a Kakabar is fairly solid coming into this. Looks okay for the frame, really. Ancient run, probably just about a really favourite, but I think this race will tell us more than what we know about these horses at the minute, and sadly it's another watching race for me. Yeah, uh, I've, I've got to join you, because I, but I will I will point out two things in this race. Um, Ancient Rome, I kind of love physically. I think mm. he's really, prog- I, I really like him as a type. The dropping trips are negative from a mile to seven furlongs. It's not a good thing. Um, so, that would be a worry as a backer, which that makes me, I can't play. Uh, Stone Age, um, I laid in running last time and I needed a new pair of chums um, <laughs> in running. As, 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 as it jumped the path, I managed to lay about 8.8 on Betfair to a, to about £80, £90, and then thought, as it's coming through to challenge, I'll take all the 2.56, all the, the three, yeah, we'll lay that, leave it up there. We're not bothered. It can't when it's jumped the path. It's it's had a nightmare trip, wide trip, and it, it did everything by nearly win. And, yes, I was, yes, it was, uh, it was a, a stripe, let's say. Um, so yes, Stone Age, I, I felt is is improving rapidly. 
Um, and that was an amazing run at Leopardstown to do that and get beat ahead because had it not jumped the path, it would have won. Um, so Stone Age, but it, it, it is a bit gearless for me. It, it, I know that sounds really harsh, but I like a horse to quicken, and this horse just gallops and gallops and gallops. And again, another one that's dropping from a mile to seven furlongs um, wouldn't be for me, really, even in, even in bog deep ground. So I'm, I'm going to pass on the race. So I'm going to leave it again to the two capable judges uh, that we've got on tonight we have got judges on you know with, with me and john are passing but andy i'm coming to you on it on this race well i like the i like the two you've mentioned ancient rome has won his last three won a group three last time out um he's up in class but i like you i do like the horse um just to come to your recollection of snurge winning the uh grand criterium i don't think he did because uh, 1991 another great horse who we all remember Arazi actually won this in 1991 been some good horses winning it um he might well have, Sturge might well have won somewhere but he didn't win he didn't win this race not in 1991 because <laughs> 10, 10 be won it the year after uh, and I can tell you what won it last year because Sealaway won it last year he was running in the arc been some good horses won it Horatio Nelson only Roman Empire um Go back, uh, Victor Ludorum won it, Sealaway won it last year. It's been some decent, decent money, but, but, but no sign of Snurge, I'm afraid. Um, but um, Angel, oh, this is uh, this is the gin, it really is. I'm yeah, sorry. well, uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, we need a sponsor. Um, Ancient Rome is the horse I like, I, I think he'd be better horse next year. Um, if there's one that could get the run of the race, it was Ebro River, but I wasn't particularly enamored with him at the price. I concur with your comments on Stone Age fully. I mean, he just looks a real out-and-out galloper, doesn't he? I mean, he yeah. just kept going last time out. You kept thinking, there's one of those that you need. Again, I was talking to you about run styles earlier, and you just need to know the sort of run style because he just kept galloping, uh, even if it turned, you know, it'd need to turn into a real slog for him to win. But I do think he'd be quite a nice horse over further next year. Um you know, one to you know, one to keep an eye on. I, I won't be playing in the race. I do like Ancient Rome and Stone Age for me as a horse for next year. Uh, I, I'll pass on the race, but um, no sign of Snurge, I'm afraid. Quentin, while us three are in the pub and 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 just chatting away and and, and offering nothing to listeners, um, I'm sure you can carry the flag in this race. Uh, it's trappy, isn't it? This race. Um, didn't particularly like Ebro River on on this ground. Like he's going to be swamp like conditions. Um, he, he's too free for me on this. He, I, I can see him finishing out the back of the TV. I wasn't sure about Akaba on the ground either. Dan was untried on anything worse than good to soft, and he's he's yet to try anything worse than good to soft as well. Stone Age to Dan flopped on heavy. Half brother flopped on heavy. I, if I have, if I had a gun to my head, I would play Angel Blur, the vintage form's ropey, but he was further back than ideal. He, he handles the ground. He will stay the trip. Um, concern is freshness after what a couple months off the track, given how lit up he was at Goodwood. Um, if, if I had a gun to my head, I'd play Angel Blur, but I don't, so I won't. So the bar steward's view view here is gin and paint. <laughs> Bath tub gin, fifty-seven percent liver pate, and uh, a very nice crusty loaf um, is the, is the advice for the Grand Criterium. So we move to the um, the the, the, the three hundred five, which is obviously the, the major focal point of the weekend, um, running a libog, and Tarnawa has now displaced Adiar as three to one favourite for the Arc de Triomphe. Quentin, I'm coming straight back to you on the Arc. I'm sure you've got something for me in the arc i wish i did um i wanted to play hurricane lane the prices just kind of ebbed away um the, the arc was hard it was yeah yeah I, i've got nothing on the arc I'm, go, I'm gonna pass i think hurricane lane he's now the right price at seven or two he was a bit bigger before the rain came tonight was probably the right favorite at ar i'm not really sure about snowfall I wish I got in the book before she got beat last time out because I was in your cap, your guys' camp with her form didn't really amount to much and you could you could lay her at five to two and 
now she's what five to one so yeah um nothing really on me if, if hurricane lane drifts out to maybe 11 to two six to one then then i'll probably back him um go on the ground uncomplicated will stay well obviously stays the trip a decent draw to work from as well Quentin speak of the truth also from my angle. Um literally the same the same as Quentin. I think I think this is this is a this is a, a great arc to watch. I'm not saying it's the, the best arc in terms of quality, but it's certainly a, a fantastic arc to watch because it's fascinating. The, 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 there's many cases to be made for the market leaders. Uh Snowfall we've been against all year. Uh but even even for her, I think the ground coming up like this might help. Um, for some bizarre reason, because obviously she 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 was on sort of like you know soft water ground in the Oaks um, and, and kind of bounded through it, and and that kind of in, plays in back of your mind as for like striping her and thinking, well, she's nowhere near as good as the uh, the Derby winner our day are or the Ledger winner Hurricane Lane, and or certainly the older mayor Tanawa, who is who the Ginger Hitler loves the Ginger Hitler loves Tanawa. Um, so I mean, it, it, it's a case of for me. It's a sit out again. I mean, we're we're not doing very well for listeners on this show, but again, the arc to me is priced up absolutely bang correct. John, thoughts? Yeah, I can't really argue with that. Lee, to be honest, um, what I would point out is that see the way it's finished closer to St Mark's Basilica than most this season. He's had a problem where he's been put away for this, and probably knowing how the frogs like their art trials, I'm thinking he's probably had a problem, but. I don't think I've let him go off and back to 80 plus. Um, Dan was fast. Chances are he won't stay anyway, but you know, um, he's in there at a big price. And I think if it does get a bit boggy as well, it could be worth maybe chancing a couple of shekels on the German Panzer trained by the Shagging shirt. The German Panzer, yes, the Alan Kerr. And you love you 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 always said you love an Adler flog, don't you? A German, a big German bread for the big soup. Um, when it's the soup, I think uh, you can do a lot worse. And uh, I thought it ran out right at your thing down that was far too quick for him over a distance that was far too short. He's got the verdict over the Derby winner earlier in the year, and you know, twenty five plus. He, he he's a bit sporting, isn't he? But. The market looks about eight, really. Yeah, it's, it's a shout. You, you can kind of see Alan Kerr being there about, but maybe not winning. But I, I said, John, it's 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 a good case at that sort of price. Uh, Andy, finishing the arc with you. Right. Well, I've uh, I hopefully I've I've front run John here because um, I've nicked all the uh, I nicked all the forties and fifties about Alan Kerr earlier in the week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can you can make do with the thirty threes this time, John. Um, um, I, I, I mean, he really is probably the one or one of the few horses who would want it if it really ticked down, wouldn't he? Um, and John has put made some very good and salient form points about him. Um, you know, he didn't see which uh, Mishref beat him in the internet, you know, Judmont, um, a mile and two on quick ground. Don't think that was going to suit him at all. He still beat Love and two other Group One winners in that. So if you, you know, it wasn't a bad piece of form. Um, I mean, if you want to go right back, of course he's beaten Adyar earlier in the year. Um, and he's been off since mid-August. I like the fact that Tom Marquand is back on board. Um, he got given too much to do when he ran in the Grand Prix de Paris. I still think he's not a bad price at around, you know, around thirty-three, somewhere like that. You might. Be pushing it to get that now, but even at 25s, John has mentioned Sealaway as well. Um, and again, another one for the outsiders. Um, I've managed to burgle a bit of 50s on this earlier in the week as well. Um, if you look back at his form, of course, he won the Jean Luc Lagardère last year on heavy ground, so he's not going to mind it if the ground turns testing. And he was really unlucky. If you go back and watch that Breeders' Cup juvenile turf, got hampered after about not you know just after the start from stall one that ended his chance and he kept on really well he finished fifth in that i mean his form is actually pretty decent i mean he was well back french 2000 guineas they backed him off the boards for that ended up racing wide and it didn't really work out for him there um i still think he's got a a reasonable uh, you know a reasonable chance in this um 
And I think he's he's too big, uh, you know, forties plus on the on the machine. And I was and I did back. I actually backed Tanawa at fives and eleven to two before she ran against uh, St Mark's Basilica last time out, which I thought was a super run. In in terms of the stats on the race, she's probably a little bit older than your normal winner. But is this a normal uh, a normal year? So I've, I've rode in with Tanawa. Would I back her at sort of seven to two now? Probably just about, but I think it's about the right price. But if you've not on the, the two stabs and it pisses down with rain, for want of a better word, then see Luana Lenqua for a couple of sporting plays. Great stuff. So, so Alenka for John, Alenka for Andy, and see Luana mentioned also at, at big prices. Andy also back to Nawa at uh, 11 or two, now threes, but price right for the arc for me. So, good luck with that. Uh, we move on to the pre-opera, uh, which is the Group 1 affair. Adaya is a 3-1 to one favourite. I'm going to kick people off here. And a bet that I think it's similar lines to Alenka uh, in terms of, of, of value is Ambition, uh, trained by, um, I'm not even pronouncing it, written by Gerald Mosse. And in fact, anyone pronounce the surname? Demi, no, no. Anyway, 20s is available. 25s was available. I think 20s is a minimum price, to be honest. Uh, Ambition has always been close up behind Adaya and Grand Glory um, and Thundering Knights. Um, there's probably a couple of lengths between these sort of top-class fillies. And and I, I think Ambition really has sort of plateaued at where she is. But 20 to 1, I thought, was very, very fair. She's very genuine. She'll run a race, and I think she should be using exotics maybe four cast, tri casts, maybe three, four places, wherever on the machine you can get. And I thought Ambition was very interesting. Quentin, your thoughts here? Uh, for me, it's Sablia Spain. Um, it's the ground angle with her. I, the trainers harped on about how she needs soft ground, needs soft ground, needs soft ground, and she finally gets it here. Um, she's, sorry, one second. Um, She's going to improve for the ground again. Um, she won a, an easy listed race last time out, just blitzed them from the front. It was on good ground. Um, but she, she's better than that. She's a lot better than that. She uh, looked like winning the pre Diane, uh, leading until about 100 metres from the line before um, being ran down by Joan of Arc. Um, again, good ground. Um, and then in the, uh, it was the pre Saint Allery earlier in the season. Um, probably should have won that group one uh, found all sorts of trouble in running in a steadily run race uh, she's much the best she's just going to keep improving and improving and improving uh, doesn't look to be a massive pace on the card so uh, if she can get out and, and slot across like she did do at uh, Chantilly beforehand um, I think she'll take a good deal of beating there I think she should be favourite um, Olivier Pellier rides um, he rode her last time out um, I think she should be about seven or two. She's six to one, eleven or two. Um, she was she was the biggest twelves in the week. Um, that's gone. Um, but the more rain, the better for her. I think she's uh, going to improve significantly for the rain. Good stuff. So it's the rain angle for Quentin regarding Sibylia Spain at six to one for Olivia Peslier. Uh Chris of Head, the trainer. Um, yep, can't argue with that at all. Um, definitely looks as though she will improve for the ground. So that's six to one. Quentin believes she should be favourite. Andy, your thoughts here? I probably was the one who nicked the twelves in the week. <laughs> have you? Have you? Have you been pinching again? Yeah, yeah I did uh, in the week. There looked to be a one or two that could have come out of this, and they'd left them in the betting. And if you looked at if you looked at the race in the week, as I did, and had a quick look, knowing this was coming up. Um, there was a forfeit stage earlier in the week. Um, Le Petit Coco was in the betting. I think she's going to Ascot now. They still had uh, Rabia and Love uh, in the betting as well. They're obviously gone uh, elsewhere as well. Um, and three-year-olds have got a good record in this. And um, she looked a, a reasonable bet. I think Quentin's made the, the form angle for this. Uh, and I'd still be very much with her now, even at sort of, was she 11 to 2, 6 to 1 now? She won the yeah. pre de Court last time out pretty easily two and a half lengths okay that was a drop down in class it's only a listed run but her two previous runs were in a good fourth in group one company i think she's well up to this and sabia spain 
sort of around six to one I still think it's a reasonably good bet fantastic cases from you guys well done um Sibylia Spain for Andy and Quentin John couldn't put anybody off that really because I'm I'm not terribly keen on Ardra um I, I don't think she's really come close to last year's from this year and I'm, I'm not keen on her, you know uh so anybody that's fancying rowing in with the boys there, yeah, I couldn't put you off. Okay, so Sibylia Spain for um, Andy, for Quentin. Uh, ambition for me, at a large price. Um, but yeah, take the points on board. And, and probably more compelling there from Andy and uh, Quentin than from myself regarding Sibylia Spain. You might want to consider that a six to one at the moment available. We move on to the pre labby Tom Eaves, he rides more Abbey winners than he does normal winners at Newcastle. Um, he's on glass slippers, nine to two second favourite, bidding for another success in the Abbey, the pair. Soeza heads the market at nine to four. Three winners in the last 10 years have managed to do it from double figure draws, despite the scaremongering, scaremongering. It's probably Remainers still moaning about Brexit. You know, he can't win from a high draw in the Abbey. You know, he can't, you know. Three have done it in the last 10 years. Quentin, the Abbey. No real opinion. I, I went back and forth, back and forth. Market looks about right. I've taken kind of the draw points on board with Swayzer, but you, you were like to be pushed out maybe to 11 or 4, 3 to 1 before getting involved, given she's got stall 12. Glass slippers love the ground, winter power. You can see Sylvester D'Souza just doing too much on her and her falling in a hole late. Um, no, no strong opinion. Market's right. Yep, I would concur with that. Um, Soeza is a very, very good filly. Um, I love the the ground angle for her as well. Um, the wide draw, he can't. You know, you just wish it had just had some that little bit of cover, maybe mid pack sort of central or or just the way she runs. Um, so yeah, it, it's a it's a big put off. So I'm in Quentin's camp. Winter power. Obviously, I I just think Winter Power at York's a, a different filly to anywhere else. I, th- I think York suits Winter Power down to the ground. I'm not sure it'll suit old Stone and, um, <laughs> uh, um in, in in the Abbey job. What you what are you thinking? I think Suez is a very good filly, and I think she'll win this. I hope you're right. But yeah, I'd I'd like to see it just from a, from yeah. Yeah, I think. Um... She was in convenience by where she was racing at York. I don't think she got the best of her head. A little bit more giving the ground here. Um, plenty of pace on. Um, I'm, I'm very confident of her winning this, to be honest. I like this because I, I like you boosting my confidence. Because, I mean, I, I, I keep reading this about the draw. Does that not put you off, drawn so no. wide? No. Um, as long as she's nowhere near the... Princess Diana Tunnel, I think she'll be absolutely fine. No. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> the ghost of Phil can't put a bullet in her. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, Suiza for John at nine to four, and obviously I think Suiza a tremendous filly. And do you do you, do you agree with those sentiments? I think I think the, I'm still getting over John's last comment. <laughs> um, I think that, I think that all the talk about the draw could actually talk up the price uh, for Suiza and to a certain extent glass slippers as well. Um, and completely unoriginally, they'd be the two that I'd want to be with against this field. Um, I did look at the, those draw low, but unless it's a really, you know, a real bias there, you know, you're struggling to see any of the ones sort of drawn one, two, three or four winning. I mean, the the, the shortest price I got down is 25 to one. It's about wild majesty. And to be honest with you, I'd love to see Suessa win. I, I didn't think she got a great ride at, at York, but she wasn't in the right place. The ground was too quick. I think everything was against her there. She does look a very, very good filly. Uh, I wouldn't write glass slippers off. Would I play at the current prices? No, I wouldn't. But if if, if you get a silly drift on Suessa and, 
you know, she goes to saw something like sort of seven to two or something like that. You'd have to get involved and probably have a little bit of a saver on glass slippers as well, because her form is pretty decent here. The draw could actually talk up the price, you know, talk out the prices a little bit. Uh, and let's hope it does. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm happy to I'm happy to watch. If it does, I'll get involved. Agreed. I, I think you've summed it up quite well there. Um, that's the Abbey summed up really well. I think it's the way to get drift to a price on the exchange. Just keep just keep a lookout. Um, obviously priced up probably accordingly at the moment, but definitely the best 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 filly in the I, I love Suez. I think I think tremendous tremendous horse. Um, we move on to the five o'clock long champ, the last race we're covering, the group one pre de la Forêt. And um Kinross is my choice in this. Uh, it would be the best bet on the Sunday for me uh, around the 13 to 2 mark. I'm scratching my head as to why it's 13 to 2, um, given that um, Kinross defeated Space Blues at uh, Goodwood. Um, there's not a lot between them, to be honest. Um, you know, I mean, it, it was one of them, they were both drawn wide at Goodwood. They shouldn't really have been involved in winning, but they did. Um, Creative Force was second. Um, I think that's 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 the best form on offer. This is not a vintage uh, uh, La Forêt renewal, and I, I do think Kinross is a very good bet, thirteen to two with with Frankie Dettori in the saddle. I think how Space loses five to two. I'm not quite sure. Um, so as a Kinross for me at thirteen to two. John, any views on La Forêt? Um, yeah, I'm with you. Um, I, I like Kinross very much. Um, I think the price is ridiculous compared to the price of Space Blows. That's one for Blogger and all his fans. Um, <laughs> I, I, think, I think we're on the uh, on the right side. We're the boys in the white hats. Here. The um, right side. The right side of history. Yeah, uh, of the bastards. Kinross for me and John. Andy wouldn't have a strong opinion on this. Um, Space Blues is about the right price, and if there is a bit of value in the race, I think you two boys have hit the nail on the head with Kin Ross, to be quite honest with you. Um, I suppose the only thing you could say is that Space Blues, his form is actually, you know, pretty decent. Um, uh, you know, this was his third time lucky in this race, isn't it? Um, and it is a sort of specialist trip over the seven furlongs. His, his campaign's probably been geared towards this sort of meeting but i think at the prices and you know prices everything for me i'd probably be rather going with king ross than i would space blues but it's not really a race i really want to get involved with hopefully by then i'll be celebrating a big price art winner but um <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's not a race i want to get particularly involved with but again i agree with you too that the prices the, the prices are out of kilter as i, would I say. think so out, out of the kills. Um, Quentin, views on this? Uh, I didn't like Space Blues at the price. Um, I'm going to take a flyer at Speaker the Devil. Um, I thought she shaped well last time out. Um, a lot better than the bare result behind um, Sagamira. Um, she was in a steadily run race, uh, found all sorts of trouble in running. She probably should have won the race, I think. Um, she got group one form over a mile um, in the pre Rothschild. I felt in the closing stage of that, she was on the wrong part of the track. Uh, Doville seemed to have had a stand side bias on the on their course this year. Um, she's got form on soft and heavy ground. Uh, it was a nice turn of foot, decent decent slot in three. Um, she's 16 in a place. I'll probably take the 16. I'll probably take it down to 11 to 1. Um, I'm surprised that the um, aforementioned Sagamira is uh, is shorter than her, to be honest, given given the trouble in running last time out. Um, but as I said at the start, Space Blues has taken a, a big chunk out of the market here, bigger bigger than he should be. You've heard it here first at the Bastards. Speak of the devil from Quentin. A very good case made there. Take his 16s. Do it now. Take it before Quentin does. In fact, just fast forward. I'll put a, I'll put a moniker out on Twitter. Fast forward. Take Quentin's sixteens on Speak of the Devil. Make him sick. Um, <laughs> speak, of, speak of the Devil there for Stefan Pasquier and a very good case there made by Quentin. Right, just to finish the show, chaps. Uh, we've done the, uh, the, uh, the 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 French aspect there for the weekend. We'll let Blogger finish it off for the weekend. Whatever he's doing, his brains in on. Um, but. Can we have we got any other business? 
for the weekend? Have we missed anything? Quentin, I'll come to you. Anything? Yeah, I've got one that I think should be probably more five to four poking. It's nine to four currently in the Ooh. second race at Red Car. Um, comes in the shape of Australian Harbour. Um, I felt Australia as a sire doesn't get them ready first time out. Mentally, they're not there and they come on a lot for the run. Um, but he, he he went like a 747 for his debut. He made a, a big move from the, the three pole to the two pole to lead at Yarmouth. Uh, he came from last in a steadily run race and just blew up and got tied late. Um, he was a lot, a lot, lot better than the finishing position of fifth. Um, drops back in trip, which looks a positive, to be honest on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure the fitness just told first time out. Uh, time figures poor, but that's down to a, the steady, steady pace that was set. The form, form hasn't amounted to much, but this race looks poor. Um, our formator won at first. That form's dire, times modest. Um, don't like that. The, the rest are... It looks a bad race. It looks a real bad race that they've fallen on here. Um, very in, in novices at red car, two-year-old novices, five five from 10, 1.36 actual over expected. And the, the nine to four just looks all wrong. I, I expect this to be five to four, six to five, come come the off. So nice big chunky edge there. Fantastic. I love that. Nine to four, five to four chance. A true five to four chance is Quentin. Very confident in the 225 novice at red car tomorrow for Australian Harbour. Owen, uh, Ewan Walsh takes the ride for Roger Varian. <laughs> any any other business, guys? Uh, John, Andy? No, I'm all done, mate. No, Andy? I'm pr- pretty sure that I'm uh, okay there. I, d- I do quite like one I saw William Gutsy style last week uh, at Chester, Golden Melody. Uh, Tim Easterby's horse, John Egan rides, which is a pretty strange jockey booking. Uh, for the stable, but um, I think that should uh, she should go well again there. I did like the, I did like the style of her win last time out. Came from off the pace there, having pulled a little bit too hard early, but um, she should settle into that race tomorrow. So Golden Melody in the what is it the five twenty at Chester tomorrow. Won't worry if we get a boatload of the well, ground's already soft there. Won't worry if we get any soft ground. And I liked her attitude last week. Golden Melody. Good stuff with uh, good old John Egan in the saddle. Yep. Uh, nine to one available. Eighty-four year old John Egan. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Problem, yeah. Eighty-four. It could be eighty-five. Lying about his ages, John. Um, <laughs> and he's in the saddle there, booking Bronco for Golden Millie to win at Chester in the finale for you pin stickers to get out there. We hope you've enjoyed this show. Me and John are back on Sunday for give us some abuse and questions. We love it. Um, we'll be we'll be giving a Sunday sermon a good crack, and we hope you have a tremendous weekend. And hopefully, you found our views very informative. I certainly have because I've, I've I've listened to these guys; they're very good. And uh, that's all from me, John, Andy, and Quentin. Bye for now.